Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on the Tuya Knives NV4. Uh, to my knowledge, there were other variations that I just wasn't aware of. <laughs> this is my first Tuya knife. I've never experienced anything OEM'd by them or any in-house design. To my knowledge, this is an in-house design and I purchased this from Blade HQ for $200 and $39 yeah no sense um, there are three different variations and the only difference between the three are the actual inlays so the first one you have a carbon fiber and copper inlay looks pretty darn cool but copper is not really my thing um, then you have carbon fiber and aluminum that's what this one is and it is actually pretty darn nice looking this is the only knife I've ever experienced that has this type of inlay work on it and might I add it's inset pretty darn consistently all around it's not a seamless tr uh, transition but it's consistent all the way around so it's a pass to me um, and then the last variation that I wish I knew I think it was honestly posted after I actually made my purchase because this one it's also not really my thing. I don't have anything like it, but I, I would honestly want this one. It's a little bit more subdued of a color. It's a purple haze carbon fiber. So I believe it's a product of uh, like fat carbon. Looks pretty darn cool. There's, well, the example that they have here, it, it looks like there's a lot of purple in it, but I've seen some of other people when they purchase it and it's a little bit, a little bit more subdued. There is a price difference between the copper and aluminum uh, versus the uh, the purple one. It's like 21 bucks more for the purple. Whatever, eh, you know, 20, 21 bucks on top of a knife that's already well into the premium category, right? So at that point, you just kind of you know, pick whatever you want. Um, they all have the same finish, satin. I absolutely freaking hate satin. I think it's so cheap of a finish. I don't care if it's hand rubbed or anything like that, or if there are different angles to the satin. It looks cool until you start using it, until you touch it, until you look at it. And I just, I don't agree with, you know, that being on a surface that, you know, is meant to be, you know, used essentially. I mean, of course, if you're getting a knife as a showpiece, as a collector's item, yeah, sure. And who's to say that this isn't somebody's grail knife or a collector item for somebody um, but truth be told, I'm glad I gave this knife a second chance because when I got it out of the box, I was just not really impressed by it. I honestly kind of feel like I wasted my money. Um, but we'll get into some more details in just a sec. So let's get some specs. Oh, and they're all available. They're all available currently at Blade HQ. Um, I already went over pricing. Overall length of this is 7.75. So it is a full size knife. Hooray, full size knife on this channel. Wow. Because <laughs> I do mainly medium sized knives. It's just my thing. Blade length is 3.25. The cutting edge is. Okay, no, they. they ah. My gosh, they keep doing this. Blade HQ keeps switching around their, uh, their cutting edge and their blade length measurements. Their blade length is 3.375. Their cutting edge is 3.25. Blade width, an inch. Blade thickness is 0.12. Blade material, CPM S90V. That's pretty darn nice. Um, and I can definitely tell that this is way harder than most of the other knives that I have. I don't have too many things in S90V. Um, come to think of it. What else? You know, I, I had a Native 5 in S90V, but I'm pretty sure I sold that one. Uh, my PM2 for that was just really sad. My PM2 as a size comparison knife is an S90V. It's good stuff. I love it. I love sharpening it. It's just, it's definitely harder. Definitely, definitely a, a harder material to sharpen than something like S35VN, right? Um, so there's that guy. Let's do the native five. Hopefully that's centered. Yeah, we'll call that. We'll call that good. 
Let's do some bench maids now. Osborne, 940. And there's a bug out. There's bug out. All right, all right. Demco 80 20.5. And last, Civivi Elementum. So, as you can see, this is a pretty good sized knife, it really is. Uh, again, maybe not something that, you know, I would typically reach for often because uh, it is on the larger side, right? I don't, to my day to day and all the time that I spend at work, this is a lot, a lot of blade length for me. But I will say I have been reaching for it a lot lately because of that blade shape. It's just wonderful to use. Um, <laughs> it's funny, like at the end of my day, when I... You know, go to like clean off whatever knife that I carried. I always noticed that like I only ever use like this much of the actual knife, and I'm just like I got all this, and this is all still like you know hair splitting sharp. But then this little bit right here is like dulled out. You can see it's all like smudged up. There's like gunk and shit all over it. But hey, I just gotta use just the tip, right? It's all point of this freaking channel. All right, let's get the weight on this after that very sad joke. It's definitely a uh, chunky knife. Feels like it. 3.8, you know, it's not too, too bad. Could be a little bit lighter. Um, that is due to the fact that there is no internal milling. But if that QSP Puffin can have internal milling and pretty big inlays, you know, at this price point, I would expect the same. Also, I would expect a little bit better uh, uh, finishing work of the titanium. Yes, it's contoured. Yes, it has a nice inlay on both sides. But right in there, that is sharp. Like sharp, sharp. Like uncomfortably sharp. And I noticed it on a ride back home one day. I was just, uh, I was just flipping the knife, deploying it multiple times. And I was just kind of running my fingers around everything. And I noticed, I'm like, hey, that's... That's snagging onto my skin a lot. So yeah, right there. There is a hardened steel insert, which is nice. It's not uh, titanium on steel contact. Um, it almost looks like it is, but it's not. It's, you know, right behind it, tang of the actual blade. But the very, very edge of the titanium that's holding in that inlay, that is sharp. Also another area that just kinda feels a little fumbled and you know, not really finished well is the relief cut space here it's a nice looking relief cut nothing fancy nothing crazy um and it looks really clean but feels a little a little sharp right there that corner there and that one right there it's just something you feel it's not a big deal um again <laughs> fully contoured scales it has this pretty cool looking finish on the actual titanium i think it's called zerblast i i don't know what that is exactly i'm gonna go ahead and just say it's like a bead blast or stone i don't know not a stone blush. um it's very similar to what uh mbk does it looks exactly the same they might be using different media i don't know they might have their own proprietary thing going on but uh no it's good stuff it looks good um, I just wish that, you know, there was a way to, you know, remove the inlays so I can anodize this because um, that would even persuade me even more to keep this knife because uh, it's just the action after it's broken in and after I had to take it apart, tune it a little bit. And I'm glad that I did do that because now I'm singing a whole new song with this with this knife. I really am. If I had reviewed this knife... A week after getting it no no I would just I would not recommend it at all it was absolute trash out of the box it had detent lash right there was play right there it's gone now it's gone I don't know exactly what I did I all I did was tighten up the lock bar strength it didn't have any stick thankfully 
that's one uh, common thing that can happen when you go to uh, actually tune a knife um so thankfully i avoided that there's no play side to side up or down it's good to go and because of it being able to get rid of that detent lash the thumb studs and the action overall has just increased exponentially um it is very short you know it's not a, a long travel you just pop it just pop it just the shortest short little strong little push and it just goes flying out things on bearings of course and it's just it's stupid stupid smooth i had an issue with the thumb studs at first because i was just like that's so stupid like there's no traction there's no there's no nothing to get at it but if you get right behind it and even reverse flicking i'm using my skin just cut my nails freaking like scrubbed my hands and everything for my work day and uh so i don't have that you know that work day callus um, and you know what? This is still pretty darn comfortable to me. So I would say that I do recommend this knife just after it's broken in. So maybe if you see one on like nafsale.com, I, uh, I would say look into that. Definitely. I would say look into that for sure. Uh, what else is there to go over? Not really a whole lot more. Uh, body hardware. You have T6s for all the body and the clip. T8 for the pivot axis on both sides. Um, it does have a captured pivot, which is cool. Really easy to take apart, disassemble, clean. Um, and yeah, a little bit jumping back there. Kind of wish it was maybe a little further up, about double. But hey, I'm always asking for more jimping, and it just doesn't seem like it's really going to happen. Um, am I going to keep this knife? It's probably going to hang around for a while, honestly, because the cutting performance on this thing, it's pretty darn nice and the action it's uh it's good stuff it's good stuff now now after you know taking it apart cleaning it messing with it a lot um and i even made a little tiktok not tiktok but i made a youtube short talking about don't be scared to take apart your knives because you can truly rob yourself of a wonderful experience with a knife there are so many people that within their first couple minutes of owning a knife they will decide right then and there whether or not they're going to <clears throat> the warranty it out basically they're going to return it they're going to complain and they're going to write off the model or the brand completely i was ready to do that right but i gave this knife a chance took it apart cleaned it fiddled around with it just a little bit i had some time on my hands to do that at the moment and i did and it's uh yeah it's good it's pretty darn good so i will say if you guys can get one that's maybe already broken in I'd say you're probably better off with that versus getting a brand new one because uh, when it was going through the process of breaking in, the action wasn't that great. It's a whole lot better now. It's a whole lot smoother now. Um, a thumb stud action, it's pretty comfortable to me now. This engagement, it doesn't look that comfortable and it may even look a little tight in there, but honestly, the way that it's cut out and... There's no scalloping or anything, but there is plenty of access right there you could see. Um, and the actual lock bar itself is pretty thick, so it's a comfortable place for your thumb to land to disengage. And yeah, I mean, it drops down to your nail. Um, it nicks you kind of right there, but it's not too bad. The blade itself doesn't weigh a whole lot. Um, another little issue I had, when I went to sharpen this knife, I actually laid the edge back a good bit to get a little bit more sliciness out of this S9DV as I know it can handle it, especially at this stock thickness, good stuff. But I did create a pretty nasty smile on the first sharpening, so I'm not the biggest fan of that, but not a big deal because of course this is a user. This does have uh, a stop pin that's located further back that makes contact back there, not right behind here, how it traditionally is with a lot of other models. So if I want, I could just take my little Dremel, cut a notch right there, not a big deal. Would it look a little funny? Yeah, probably will, but you know what? I would be willing to do that for this knife. So it's a good one. I recommend it for sure. If you guys can get one on the secondary market or you're willing to deal with a couple of the little issues that it comes with, possibly. And you know what? Maybe that might just be my unit. I just have the one, right? It could just be that. Then maybe my unit came a little, a little funny. But overall, it's been a pretty good experience. I like this knife. I do recommend it. 
you guys enjoyed this review, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If you are subscribed, I most definitely appreciate all your guys' support and you guys' patience, of course, as always. Uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and consider subscribing because I have plenty more content coming your guys' way. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh -huh.